Welcome to this week's Airheads. Coming up, spot on, Phil looks at laser range finding. Darren's riding in a truck pimp for night vision. First, spring has sprung, and we're off with James with a Crosman Springer. Well, now that spring's finally here, the ducks are laying at a phenomenal rate. But um, I've got a problem. There's uh, crows and magpies are coming in and taking the eggs before I get a chance to pick them up. So I've got to do something about these, uh, about these pesky corvids. There's quite a few crows and magpies in the area and I think there's only one or two that are eating the eggs. So what I'm going to do is try and bait them in using eggs so that I know the ones I'm getting are the ones that are eating the eggs. First up's a magpie, but he's not stopping long enough. Next, down comes the crow. He's really hammering away at that egg. but his head's not holding still long enough for me to take a shot. and he's away. I'll just have to wait a bit longer and see what comes in next. Now there's two magpies, they're really squabbling over that egg. One's off, but there's one still there. Yeah, got him. Nice headshot, a little bit low, because he moved just as I was pulling the trigger, but um, it's gone through the base of the skull and, um, and also taken out one wing, so he wasn't going anywhere. Well, there's still at least one crow and one magpie that I need to deal with, but uh, that's a good start. I'm happy with that. Now here's a man with the hide and the breath of a rhino. We're off with David. This is Hot Air. The new world centre of air gun manufacture has been revealed. It's a small village in Indonesia. This picture shows a gunsmith sanding down an air rifle stock outside a small factory in the village of Kepasing. The village makes thousands of air rifles annually, most of them made in small back garden operations. Canadian air gun owners have become criminals overnight. A recent case ruled that air guns have become firearms. Now an appeal to Canada's Supreme Court will argue that the ruling instantly criminalises Canada's air gun owners who do not keep their guns in secure cabinets and also criminalises shops such as Walmart for selling air guns. The week-long ISAS contest is underway in Dortmund. As well as rifle and pistol events, it includes men and male juniors 60-shot air rifle and women and junior women 40-shot events. Meanwhile, shooters from China and India dominated the medal positions in the Asian Air Gun Championship in Kuwait City last week. Gamo is launching its new Whisper G2 air rifle in the USA. Headlining Gamo's 2014 product lineup, the second generation Whisper air rifle features the turbo stabilising system and adjustable cheek rest. And finally, here's another reason to shoot grey squirrels, terrorism. In this case, it's not just the damage they cause to woodland, it's not just the virus they carry that kills native British red squirrels, it's hijacking aircraft. 
Happily, this is a skit by a clever YouTuber. You are now up to date with Hot Air. Aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Now, range finding is vitally important in a hunting situation, especially when it comes to hunting with an air rifle. Now, we're off with Air Gunner and Air Gun World's technical editor, Phil Price, who loves lasers. One of the biggest challenges you're going to face hunting with an air gun is range estimation. Because our trajectory and the pellet's trajectory is so curved, you need to know exactly how far away your rabbit, your squirrel, your pigeon is to be sure that you can place your pellet accurately. Now you can use a digital laser handheld rangefinder, they're very good, but I prefer to use a laser that's actually on board the rifle, which is what this is here. And the way the system works is the laser is actually looking upwards and at the distance I choose to set it at, it intersects with my optical sight line. So if the gun's zeroed, for example, at 30 yards, this is looking up and will appear on my crosshair at 30 yards. Now what this does for me is if the laser appears lower than the crosshair, that means I know it's closer than 30 yards, and if it appears above the crosshair, it's further than 30 yards. Now, I've had a little mod done on mine, so the laser control is here. So, as I come on to aim, I can simply point the gun, touch the laser, and I've immediately got that sight picture. And it's literally a case of, put it in your shoulder, yes or no. So, as you can see, at that distance, where the rats are running around, the dot's well below the crosshair. So that tells me that they're well within range. Um, it's probably only about 20 odd yards across there and this gun's actually zeroed at 43 because it's an FAC gun, a high power gun. So um, the dot is very, very close. It's only failing is on a bright day you can't see the laser. On dull days, when it's night time, overcast, absolutely brilliant. This laser was about 100 pounds, little mount bit of extra work done to fit that into there but the reason I prefer it down here is it's less likely to get knocked. Quite a few of them are offered to mount on the top here. That doesn't give you as much protection and also the distance between the laser and the sight line is relatively small. The distance between here and here is greater and the broader the triangle the more accurate the range finding. So if you've got the ability and you want to try one, I heartily recommend it. It's one of the best bits of hunting kit I've ever come across. Now, if you're in the mood, it's time to dim the lights. We're off with night air. This evening, Darren is joining Rabbit Raider Simon Whitehead in his new night vision friendly 4x4. He's added a few bits and pieces that'll make everyone's life more comfortable. Tonight I'm out with the FX Bobcat. Simon's got his FX Cyclone. We're out on one of his permissions on one of his contracts doing some rabbit control. And uh, his brother David has made him this remarkable spotter. So from the cab, he can pan and tilt and uh, spot all the rabbits without using any white light or red light and uh, it'll be I think it'll be better than watching EastEnders in his cab tonight because it's going to be nice and warm and he's assured me plenty of rabbits. So night vision on top of rifle on top of homemade door rest that allows Simon to leave rifle in situ when retrieving rabbits. Spotter with camera in centre of IR cluster all plugged into camera in the cab. And look there's one there. Let's see some shooting, boys. I've, I've had FAC air rifles for a long time, and what I find uh, when most people come to mine and shoot, they instantly buy an FAC air rifle, and they'll go straight to a very high, uh, heavy pellet, such as a Bisley Magnum, um, 
there's nothing wrong with busy magnums or the heavy pellets, but what I've found is if you stick to a more standard pellet, then you get a lot faster and a lot flatter trajectory. And especially for me shooting at night, everybody knows that range finding at night is the hardest thing that you'll ever do. Um, so I want an air rifle that shoots fast and flat. So I always try and run my air rifles between 22 and 26 foot pound. I find any more than that is just a waste of air. And I always just stick between 15 and 16 grain pellets. And I just find you have no loss of accuracy. Um, uh, and it's so much easier to shoot than a standard sub 12 foot pound air rifle. This one does not look too good. We thought that one was acting a bit strange. The body behaviour just wasn't quite right. And it, and it punch proved correct. It's got the onset of a bit of mixed mitosis here. A horrible sight. And if you know things weren't bad enough with the floods and me patrolling around here, they, they succumb to mixy. It's a sad state of affairs, but that's nature for you. Darren decides to stalk into one patch. The downside is the strong IR beam behind him from the camera and truck. The whiteout doesn't help, but he gets a nice one. 58 yards from where I laid. Very pleasing. The truck, the FAC spotter and screen is making rabbit control a comfortable evening out. But the one downside is not being able to feel the elements. I sat in the back of the pickup. I had no idea where the wind was, what direction it was coming from. Um, so tonight you're going to see more misses and hits. Um, poor Simon had a few technical issues with his um, digital spotter. But taping problems, it works superbly when it works. Um, he's, he just found out his wiring's a little bit short, so he just needs to make an extension cable. Um, but we had a cracking time. You know, we've accounted for a lot of rabbits and had a lot of fun. So I'd like to thank you. A few weeks ago, we were off playing with the iron plate pistol guys. But what is on offer for a pistol shooter in the UK? Peter Zamet gives us some of the options. I'd like to show you a selection of air pistols, um, which again, a lot of people use to shoot in their gardens. This one is a, a Viroc HW40. This is a single stroke pneumatic pistol that's cocked like that. Pellet would go in the end of the barrel there. That's the compression stroke. And then safety off and pop, away you go. These things are moderately powerful. You could use this to shoot targets. Very, very comfortably, great fun in your garden. This one. Is a Webley Electo. This is a, a multi stroke uh, pneumatic pistol. Slightly different box of tricks. Again, the pellet goes in the end of the barrel there, but this one, I'm not going to do it, but you can pump it up to three times. Um, and what that does is gives you a power output very, very close to the sort of maximum um, six foot pound limit. This thing will typically run around about five foot pounds. So, this is used by fishermen quite a lot to shoot rats around their bivvies. People shoot rats in their garden with them. This one, a slightly more specialist job. This is an Air Arms Alpha Proj. It's a match pistol. This is a compressed air, so it's a pre-charged pistol. The cylinder of compressed air is in the pistol grip. This is a very, very precise piece of equipment, and it's for a serious sort of match pistol shooter at clubs and stuff like that, competition stuff. Um, but great fun. Now we are moving on to the what I see as the more fun side of pistols. This is a Humorex. Now this thing runs on a CO2 capsule. This is a multi-shot job. So you open the, the action up like that, you put a little rotary eight shot magazine in there uh, and close it up and bop, 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 away you go. Single or double action trigger. Um, this is the fun side of pistol shooting. Great fun, rapid fire, real, real good. Again, lovely to use in the garden. This is a more traditional pistol. This is a Viroc HW45. A very, very powerful pistol, um, very similar power to the Webley Electo. It works in a completely different way, a more conventional way. This is your big old spring pistol. You haul that all the way over, um, and again, the pellet goes in there on the way back like that. This is a two power setting, so you can cock it halfway for half power, all the way for full power. This differs in as much as this is a recoiling full powered spring pistol. So when you shoot this thing, you do feel some recoil. Makes it a bit more challenging to shoot, um, but great fun and, and, and just, just good stuff to use in your garden, real good.
From questionnaire to questioning Ted, what has the High Priest of Pellets got to say this week? Psst. Hey, Ted! Got some chums coming over, Shemois, for some squirrel in a basket. Any suggestions on what wine I should serve? An inexpensive wine. It would be because the squirrel lived a simple life. I don't want to bring pretension to the table. <laughs> Thank you for that one, Ted. Now we're off with Day State's Air Ranger. All right, pellet choice. The rule of thumb is buy the best that you can in the shop. There's three or four really good brands and the, all the others are just also rammed. So to find out what they are, ask around. When we developed the 303 pellet, we developed it as a round nose pellet rather than a solid 30 caliber slug, which you think would be more obvious. And the reason for that is we wanted it to lose energy. So generally with a 303, it's in the ground at 250 yards, and that makes it an awful lot safer than the, a mile and a half that something like a 308 will go. When you look at the 177 pellet and compare it with a 30 caliber pellet you've just seen, it's absolutely tiny. But for 12 foot pounds, the UK maximum without a license, it's a fantastic calibre. They work very well and essentially at 12 foot pounds, usually have an effective range 10 yards further than the 2.2. It's not to say that 2.2 isn't effective, it has more stopping power, but it also has a more lob trajectory. So you need to bear that in mind if you're going to stick with 12 foot pounds. Of course, if you're going to have a firearm rated rifle, then a 2.2 is generally better than the 177. So if you're buying an air rifle, and thinking about converting it to firearm at a later date, then it's much cheaper to buy a 2.2 because you haven't got to pay for the recalibering of the rifle. There are different weights of pellet. And for hunting, usually the heavier pellet is better because it retains the energy better. There's a heavyweight 2.2 for you. The problem is that the heavier the pellet, the more the lob the trajectory again. So you can end up, for instance, with a 177 heavy pellet with virtually the same trajectory as a 2.2. There's lots of choice and it's your choice, but generally the advice is buy the best you can afford, the best they've got in the shop, and you can cut the amount of testing you have to do down considerably. Just before we go, here's a few more reasons to stay on YouTube, air streaming. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Most popular air gun videos of the week, big game hunting. This American film shows deer and predator hunting with the remarkable 357 Benjamin Rogue from Crossman. Air Guns of Arizona continues its South African adventure. In this film it is out with Hounslow safaris after an Impala Ram and showcasing Umarex air guns. Air Gun Gear Show is doing a number on the new Daystate Wolverine Highlight model in 303 which has a higher shot count and carbon fibre bottle giving it a lighter weight. Here's an interesting idea for an ammo comparison from Canada. Steel BB versus lead pellets. Replica Air Guns, for that is its name, lists the pros and cons of each. Mr Dave Ratz, the lad, is out after pigeons in his inimitable style. Enjoy the footage, he says, I've got pigeons to prepare, followed by hunting footage, things get shot, sorry. Squirrel Hunter is out after grey squirrels and backing the work of the excellent Penrith and District Red Squirrel Group. There is plenty from the House of Day State this week. Here, Guns House TV reviews the FX Bobcat in 2-2. And finally, as sure as night follows day, so does Night Sight, attached to Day's Date in this film about rabbit and ratting. The excellent KPS Hunters are on their dairy farm permission. Click on the links to watch the videos or you will find them in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for air streaming, ping me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back in a couple of weeks with more from our guys at Airheads.